Hi everyone, I'm Phil from UCA. Today I'm going to talk about A-level subject choices for Oxford and Cambridge. By the end of this video, I want you to know what subjects you need to do if you want to apply for some of the most popular courses at uni, specifically Oxford and Cambridge. There's quite a lot of misinformation out there, so I want to tell you straight exactly what the requirements are, if any, for each of these courses. This will be really useful to know, because your preparation for uni begins pretty much after you finish your GCSEs with your A-levels. If it turns out that the degree you want to do requires an A-level you're really not good at or really don't enjoy, then that might actually affect which degree you choose to take. As a brief intro to myself, I studied law at Cambridge before then founding Easy Aid, an app that allows you to connect with Oxbridge students in minutes or via chat. So if you're looking for tips on applying to uni or just general study tips or advice, go ahead and check it out. We also have Oxbridge students available to help with any maths questions that you have, right when you need it. So you never need to get stuck without somebody there who can help. I've left the link to download the app in the description, so if you find yourself getting stuck on any tricky maths questions, or just want to get one-on-one -on -one advice about A-level subject choices, you can go ahead and download it now. Also, check out our YouTube channel for more videos like this. So, coming to actual A-levels themselves, at a very high level, the biggest difference between Oxford and Cambridge is the actual offers themselves. Generally, Oxford requires slightly lower A-level grades than Cambridge. For sciences, so maths, physics, and so forth, Oxford normally requires 1A star and 2As, that's A star AA, whereas Cambridge normally requires 2A stars and an A. For humanities, for example, English, modern languages, philosophy, the offers are one grade lower. So for Oxford, that's AAA, and for Cambridge, that's A star AA. So if you already have your A-levels, or if you think that you can't get high enough results for Cambridge, you might actually be better off applying for Oxford. That's sort of a, a little tip that some people don't quite grasp from the outset. That said, both universities do adjust their offers depending on student situations. So they can sometimes be understanding and give you a lower offer. So they could make a standard A-star AA offer, maybe AAA, or even sometimes I've seen them go below that. Or they can also be understanding and give you a higher offer. So it does cut both ways. Coming on to the course requirements themselves, I'll just caveat two things before diving straight in. Number one, I won't be covering every single course. There are just too many to go over. Instead, I'll go for the more popular ones. And caveat number two, I won't be covering the subject specific tests. Many courses do require you to take specific tests in addition to your A-levels. So you might have your three A-levels, you might have your three A-stars, two A-stars, or one A-star and two A's, but you might still need to do really well in the subject-specific test. For example, for medicine, you need to take something called the BMAT, which is the Biomedical Admissions Test. And for law at Cambridge, you need to do the Cambridge Law Test. For Oxford, you take the LMAT, which is the National Admissions Test for Law. Don't ask me why they messed up the order of the letters. But that's just an example of the types of subject-specific tests that you might need to do. So turning to the course requirements themselves, today we'll be going over the popular courses Medicine, Law, Science, History and Maths. So let's get stuck in. Number one, Medicine Oxford. For this you require A star AA, excluding critical thinking and general studies. So they don't regard uh, an A in critical thinking or general studies very highly it seems. You need to have it in a different subject. And you do also need to have at least an A in both chemistry and one or more of biology, physics, maths, or further maths. For Cambridge, you need two A stars in an A, chemistry, and one of biology, physics, or maths. And so that is the requirement for medicine. Number two, for sciences, at Oxford for physics, you need A star AA. Chemistry, you actually need two A stars in an A. And for bio, you need A star AA. For Cambridge, you need two A stars and an A because you only apply for natural sciences, so there isn't that distinction between the two, and you should have maths at A level. For history, again, you just need three A's, and for Cambridge, you need A star AA. No specific subjects are required. For maths, you can probably guess this one. You do need maths and further maths and two A stars and an A. And last but not least, my personal favorite law, at Oxford, they actually call it jurisprudence, but you need three A's. At Cambridge, you need A star AA, and again, no specific subjects are required, similar to history, but it is advisable to do an essay-based one. So for example, English or RS. So there you have it, a whistle-stop tour through A-level requirements for some of the most popular courses at Oxford and Cambridge. To recap, Cambridge offers are generally higher than Oxford ones, and sciences usually require A star, A star, A, whereas humanities require A star, AA, and then one lower for Oxford, of course. 
If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and head over to our YouTube channel for more. Equally, if you ever get stuck on a maths question that you can't quite wrap your head around, or you want to message an Oxbridge student about uni application tips, then download the EZA app with the link in the description. This is part of a series that we'll be doing on applying to Oxbridge slash university, so make sure to stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.